Good morning. And a warm welcome to everyone here this morning, especially to any visitors who may be worshipping with us. We hope you find peace and blessing in our time of worship here this morning. Just a few intimations. Um, a lot of nice news, actually. Uh, things are starting to slowly get back to some kind of new normal. Um, the Thursday Club is starting back on the 7th of October. If you want more information about that, then if you speak to Mary Calder. Also, Come and Sing hopes to meet back again on the 12th of October. Again, if you want any more information on the Dementia Friendly Singing Group, then please contact Lorna or Liz. Also, we hope to start back the Sunday School in Focus after the October holiday. Um, next week, uh, I'm on holiday as we await the arrival of our grandchild. Um, hopefully, she won't be late. <laughs> she probably will, but never mind. <laughs> um, so, a uh, our friend Dan is uh, covering for us, so if you need any pastoral care, then just give Dan a phone. And uh, we welcome George Kelly, uh, who's been here before, a uh, reader, former music teacher, uh, to uh, worship next Sunday, um, and he'll be leading us in the service. Um, also, there's no need to book now for worship, so if you spread the word, um, we can have up to... 69, I think it is, in the church presently, um, but we hope to relax that even more over the next few weeks um, if the numbers continue to decrease in Eastern Bartonshire. The government still requires all places of worship for people to wear masks uh, within uh, the sanctuary um, and the building, so uh, we still need to wear masks. But it's good to try and keep everybody safe. <laughs> um, also, um, the, we're going to try and, uh, I think David's trying to record the service this morning in the church. Um, so uh, it'll only be me and, and Jane that will be in the recording and, and also a, um, a reader as well, uh, Fiona. Um, so there's no, nobody else that will be in the recording in case you're worried uh, about that. Uh, we're we're going to have to uh, plan it very carefully in the future, um, you know, make sure that only those who want to be in the, the recording are in it. We'll have a place in the church for, for those who don't want to be in the recording, they can, they can sit, but we'll, we'll do it as discreetly as we can initially. It's just, it's a new learning curve and uh, it's just something that uh, churches now are um, having to do. Um, so uh, I hope that you're able to, uh, <laughs> you can watch it if you want. Again, you might not want to, but uh, if you want to have a look this afternoon, you can see what you think it looks like, you know, and give us some feedback. That would be helpful. Um, so there'll be a live stream service on YouTube this afternoon, and also I'll record for the phone line. Um, the phone line's quite important because it allows those that don't have internet which is quite a few of our members to still be able to join us in worship. So if you can spread the word that the phone line will continue indefinitely, um, that would be good. Also, uh, we're going to have tea after the service on the 7th of November. So um, that's something to look forward to. And, um, and also we have a, a baptism uh, on Sunday the 10th and another two baptisms after that. So we've got the baptism of James uh, Gemmel, um, the son of Lorna and James, and of course, grandchild of Mary and William. Uh, that's on Sunday the 10th. So we've got that to look forward to. And I think he's, oh, he's here. <laughs> oh, how lovely. Hello, James. <laughs> and uh, of course, we've got Oliver, uh, Nicole and Matthew's wee boy over there. Um, as well. So welcome to worship, Nicole and uh, we Oliver. And uh, congratulations to, to Lorna and James and Nicole and Matthew and the safe arrival of your baby boys. Congratulations. So I th 
think that's all the intimations. Um, so before I worship, let's have a moment of peace and calm. Come, Holy Spirit, and still our souls from any restlessness, calm our minds from any turmoil, and quieten our hearts from any anxiety. Come, Holy Spirit, and bring peace and comfort and wholeness in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. So let's sing our first hymn this morning, and the words uh, will be up on the screen if you don't have a hymn book. If you've got a hymn book, it's number 132, Immortal Invisible. Also meant to intimate as well that uh, Jane and the choir had their first practice uh, on Tuesday night, um, so that's good news. So um, we'll look forward to having the choir back. Although they'll need to space out and sit in different areas, but um, it's a, a start um, in the right direction. So that's good news. So let us come before God in prayer. Let us pray. Creator God, we praise you for the beauty of this time of year, for the leaves starting to change color, for the nights drawing in, for the apple and the pear trees yielding their harvest. Creator God, we praise you for the joy of family and friends, the comfort of a caring neighbor, the camaraderie of a work colleague. And we praise you that groups are restarting especially in our church, heralding hope and warmth and friendship and fun times to be enjoyed as we approach the darker months of autumn and winter. Creator God, we praise you for the energy you give to us, for the new ideas and the creativity which you plant in our hearts. 
We praise you for the work you call us to do, using our gifts and our expertise to bless and enrich others and bring fulfillment to ourselves. Creator God, we praise you for boundaries, for the extent of our limits, for the fullness of our capacity, for the times when we know we can do or achieve no more. For during those times, we are reminded that we are not gods. We are mere human beings, made of flesh and blood, bone and sinew, with limits and limitations. And so, Creator God, forgive us for those times when due to the pressure of others or pressure from ourselves, we try and push ourselves beyond our limits and become frustrated and weary as a result. Forgive us for those times when we believe that we are a God and it's all down to us. And we forget that our no allows another to say yes. Creator God, forgive us. Creator God, remind us through our worship today that we are created creatures made in love for love, but with limitations, limitations which serve to protect us and preserve us. And so bless us through prayer and reflection, scripture and hymn, and may we find the rest we need for our souls this day. And we ask all this in the name of our Lord Jesus, who himself knew his limits, who when he lived on this earth, he taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. The Old Testament reading this morning is taken from the book of Psalms, Psalm 16 and reading from verse 1. Keep me safe, O God, for in you I take refuge. I said to the Lord, you are my Lord. Apart from you, I have no good thing. As for the saints who are in the land, they are the glorious ones in whom is all my delight. The sorrows of those will increase who run after other gods. I will not pour out their libations of blood or take up their names on my lips. Lord, you have assigned me my portion and my cup. You have made my lot secure. The boundary lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. Surely I have a delightful inheritance. I will praise the Lord who counsels me. Even at night, my heart instructs me. I have set the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand. I shall not be shaken. Therefore, my heart is glad and my tongue rejoices. My body will also rest secure. Because you will not abandon me to the grave, nor will you let your Holy One see decay. You have made known to me the path of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence, with eternal pressure, pleasures at your right hand. The New Testament reading is from the letter to the Hebrews at chapter 2. Hebrews chapter 2 
and reading from verse 10. In bringing many sons to glory, it was fitting that God, for whom and through whom everything exists, should make the author of their salvation perfect through suffering. Both the one who makes men holy and those who are made holy are of the same family. So Jesus is not ashamed to call them brothers. He says, I will declare your name to my brothers. In the presence of the congregation, I will sing your praises. And again, I will put my trust in him. And again, he says, here am I and the children God has given me. Since the children have flesh and blood, he too shared in their humanity so that by his death he might destroy him who holds the power of death, that is, the devil, and free those who all their lives were held in slavery by their fear of death. For surely it is not angels he helps, but Abraham's descendants. For this reason he had to be made like his brothers in every way, in order that he might become a merciful and faithful high priest in service to God, and that he might make atonement for the sins of the people. Because he himself suffered when he was tempted, he is able to help those who are being tempted. Amen. And thanks be to God for these readings of his holy word, and to him be all honour, glory, and praise. We now continue our worship by singing hymn number 601, number 601, Look Upon Us, Blessed Lord.
During lockdown, we tended to use our small co-op more for our weekly shop. It was smaller and cozier, and it felt safer than the larger supermarket. And it was smaller, and it also had less choice in the larger supermarket, so you could be in and out much quicker. And now we're out of lockdown. I find myself strangely avoiding the local supermarket and only go in if I have to. And the other day I was thinking about this because I used to love going into the supermarket and spending ages going up and down the aisles. And I think it's because when I go into my local co-op, there's only one kind of beetroot in stock. There's only one brand of frozen peas. There's only one type of small white sliced loaf. But when I go into the supermarket, there's just so much choice. It's almost limitless. There's a whole aisle of crisps and nuts and other snacks to choose from. There's six different types and different shapes of pickle beetroot. There's ordinary frozen peas, there's garden peas, there's minted peas, and there's peas mixed with sweet corn and carrots. And before we know it, We've spent an hour or so in the supermarket, and afterwards we go home exhausted with all these decisions we've had to make, and we can't wait to make a cup of tea and put our feet up. The limitless choice in our supermarkets at times can be quite overwhelming and exhausting. The title of this sermon is A Life of Limits, a life of limits. And at first glance, it's perhaps not a particularly attractive and alluring title for who wants to have a life of limits. Is it not a limitless life which we are all taught by culture and society that we should be really striving for? A limitless life full of boundless choice and endless opportunities and diverse and extraordinary experiences? Does a life of limits instead make us imagine a life which is boring and staid, unadventurous and hemmed in? Nowadays, social media helps to create the image of a limitless life, the kind of life which we all should be striving for. We look at social media and Facebook and we see other people having the most fabulous of times visiting distant and exotic lands and doing extraordinary things with their spare time. And on Instagram, we see multiple posts of someone's daily life, which is often full and varied and exciting. But we rarely see posts and images on social media of the humdrum and the very ordinary aspects of human life. No one posts a picture of themselves when they first get up in the morning and their hair's all over the place. We never see images of a member of our family asleep in the couch after Sunday dinner or an egg boiling in a pan as we prepare the lunch. Or we never share in social media our afternoon spent having a cup of tea and a chocolate biscuit and then doing a pile of ironing. Technology gives us limitless information and limitless posts on people's apparently limitless lives. And all the while, we become frustrated and dissatisfied with our own lives. And we start to believe the false truth that the limitless life is the best kind of life. The limitless life is the best kind of life. But could the limits within our lives actually be a gift Could they be the means in which we find true peace and wholeness and actually a more spacious life than we could ever have imagined? The writer of Psalm 16 is someone aware of the need for limits in human life. And he rejoices in them as he says, Lord, you alone are my portion, my cup. You make my lot secure. And then this lovely verse when he says, the boundary lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. 
The boundary lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. Surely I have a delightful inheritance, for you make known to me the path of life. Notice the words and the phrases the psalmist uses. Words like portion, cup, my lot secure, boundary lines. Even in a much simpler world of between the 9th and the 5th centuries BC, when the Psalms are believed to have been written, this person of ancient times is aware of boundaries and the limitations within a human life. And he understands his own limitations to be God-given when he describes how the boundary lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. In contrast, we tend to think of the boundary lines within our own lives as being negative and restrictive, a form of weakness, boundaries which always need to be pushed and extended and stretched. And sometimes we forget our humanity and that to be a human being is to have limits. We forget that we are not gods. We are created creatures. And each one of us has limits of health, of energy, of ability, of strength, to name but a few. And the writer of Hebrews also reminds us of our limits when he describes how it is only through God that each one of us exists in the first place. He reminds us that we are flesh and blood, flesh and blood, and that we need help from Christ to resist temptation in our lives. And it's interesting to note that later in chapter four, the writer mentions the need for us as human beings to have a day of rest every seven days, a Sabbath, each week. The other day, I held a sleeping baby boy in my arms for a full hour. It was a lovely excuse just to sit in a chair in someone's house for a whole hour and not move. Because if I moved, I would disturb his peaceful sleep. This baby boy's need for sleep had limited me. For a whole hour, my arms became his pillow, my well-padded belly his bed. This baby boy had limited me, but he had actually given me a great gift for holding him for a whole hour and doing nothing else was a means by which I found peace and wholeness and a more spacious life than I could ever have imagined. As human beings, and as the Hebrew writer says, created in God's image, flesh and blood, we all have our limits, whether they're physical or mental. We have limits in the amount of energy we have each day. We have limits in our skill sets and knowledge in certain areas. We are limited to the place we live. We are limited in our range of family and friends, our time, also the season of life that we find ourselves in. The writer Ashley Hales in her book, The Spacious Life, asks the question, she says, what would happen if we tried embracing our limits as gifts for our flourishing rather than barriers to our success? And she goes on to say, I think we would find that we were beginning to walk the way of Jesus. By accepting a life of limits, we recognize that we are not God. We are created creatures made in love for love, flesh and blood by God. And it is wholly liberating to know that we need not, we need, do not need to live a life of exhausting and never-ending limitlessness 
We do not need to strive for the Facebook and Instagram depictions of extraordinary and amazing and overfull lives. No, the limits of our lives are actually the means by which we can experience a more spacious life than we could ever imagine, so that we too can say with the psalmist in today's scripture reading, the boundary lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. The boundary lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. The theologian Leslie Newbigin says, true freedom is not found by seeking to develop the powers of the self without limits. The acceptance of limits is a necessary part of what it means to be human. But society and culture teach us that the limitless life is the best way to live. It's the best life to live. It's a life of boundless choice, of endless opportunities, diverse and extraordinary experiences. But after reflecting on Scripture today, could the limits within our lives, the season of life we find ourselves in, actually be a gift? Could they be the means by which we find peace and wholeness and a more spacious life than we could ever have imagined? After all, limits are there to protect us, to sustain us, to preserve us. For we are not God, and we are not gods. We are human beings made of flesh and blood. Therefore, we do not need to live a limitless life. We only need to live the life that we have at this time and this season, a life of God-given limits. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. To remind us of our need for God every hour of the day, we now sing this old and much loved hymn, number 556, I Need Thee Every Hour.
For our prayers of intercession, it's with sadness that I intimate the deaths of Mr. Ian Laurie, the husband of Morag Laurie, and also Anson McCone, the husband of Margaret McCone. And their services will take place not next week, but the week after. So we remember them and their families in our prayers at this sad time. So let's come before God with our prayers for the world and for others. Let us pray. God of limits, who created our world in good order and set boundaries between land and sea and light and darkness, giving each its place in the grand scheme of things, creating order with each living thing, having its own unique purpose to fulfill. God of limits, we pray for our world, and we pray for those for whom limits are not observed and boundaries not respected. We pray for those people used and abused in our world this day and those who are trafficked as human slaves. We pray for those in our world who are oppressed and voiceless, denied human rights and education, who are not respected and valued as they should. Those for whom others use and abuse to feed the limitless appetite in our world for money and sex and power. God of limits, we pray for those who feel a sense of pressure, especially young families to live limitless lives those who feel that their lives are too small, their lives not visible enough or productive enough to truly matter. We pray for those who feel a sense of pressure to be busy and available to everyone at any time. We pray for those who are weary and overburdened as a result and for whom their own mental and physical health is suffering. God of limits, we pray for those who push their own limits to breaking point, who strive to succeed in an area which is not their strength, who strive to achieve things on unrealistic timescales, who strive for more experience and more adventure and more excitement, never finding the contentment they seek in the process and never valuing the joy of each day. Healing God, we pray for those who are struggling this day and who need a special touch of your love. We remember those sick and in hospital, those who are terminally ill and their loved ones. We remember those living with mental illness. We remember those who are lonely. We remember those who care for a loved one. We remember those parents who are caring for young babies. And we pray this day for those who are mourning the loss of a loved one. We remember those who are concerned today about a family member or a friend or a work colleague. And in the next few moments of silence, we bring before you our own prayers and concerns and the names of those whom we are worried about, knowing that you are here, you are listening, and you care. God of limits, we pray for ourselves. We pray for ourselves when we become frustrated at our own limitations or when we feel that what we do is is not enough 
or when life's circumstances bring us into an unwelcome period of quietness and, and slowness. May we know that whatever circumstances we find ourselves in, whatever limits we have, that we are forever precious to you and our lives matter just as much. And so may we rest within our limits this day. And as the psalmist says, may the boundary lines fall for us in pleasant places this day and forevermore. Amen. We now sing our final hymn, which is hymn number 519, number 519, Love Divine, All Loves Excelling. Go now and serve God within your limits, within the season of life that you find yourself in, for that is enough. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you this day and forevermore.